this is Captain Chaudhary. Uh, in this session, I want to talk about anti-rolling devices. There were certain anti-rolling devices which have become obsolete. I mean, they are not economically or commercially viable on the ship. We will talk about the anti-rolling devices which may be still found on the ship. So basically, what is the purpose of anti-rolling devices? Let us understand. Anti-rolling devices, they basically do two things. One is reduce the amplitude and other one is increase the time period. Suppose you talk about a passenger ship. A ship is rolling violently and ship's rolling period is small. Say from 25 degrees on one side to 30 degrees on other side, it might take just about uh, uh, 6 seconds. So that kind of rolling is very uncomfortable for the passengers. What passengers want is either the amount of roll is reduced or the time that is taken from one extreme to other extreme is larger. In both the situations they might find some comfort. So anti-roll devices basically have these two functions to achieve. One is reduce the amplitude and other one is increase the time period and why not if both can be done together. So let us try and understand uh, uh, what kind of anti-rolling devices are fixed on the ship. So basically anti-rolling devices can be considered of two types. One is active and other one is passive. What is the difference between active and passive? You have a retractable fin kind of anti-rolling device on a ship. Is it active or passive? No, it is not active. You might have machinery fitted to take out the fin or retract the fin within the hull but that is not active type. Active type means you should have a sensor which will sense the roll and typically a sensor could be the gyro based and you should have actuator or thruster who will act on the command that is given by the sensor. Right? So if you have a set of sensors and actuators fitted on an anti-rolling device, then the device can be called as active. Otherwise, the de device is passive. Now, the different kind of anti-rolling devices which are fitted on the ship, we will just try to understand briefly the principle incorporated. Right? So you might have the bilge keels on the ship. You might have retractable fins. You might have anti-roll tanks, you might have active fins. So we will try and understand one by one and we will try also to understand like in what way they are helping us to reduce the rolling. Right? Now uh, let's talk about the bilge keel first. Now bilge keels are fitted at the turn of bilge and the bilge keel might be fitted uh, not over the entire length, maybe over the parallel body, 50 or 60 percent of the ship's length. Now this bilge keel are the plates which are protruding at the turn of the bilge. They might be about uh, 40 to 50 centimeters in depth. In what way the bilge keel can be considered as an anti-rolling device? Let us try and understand. First of all, uh, I will exaggerate the size of the bilge keel and uh, I will talk about the situation when the ship is rolling. As the ship rolls onto one side, what is actually happening is the bilge keel is kind of lifting a volume of water. It is as if there is an imaginary tank which is on outside of the ship side. It is as if the bilge keel is trying to lift this weight and this weight is placed away from the rolling axis. And when the weight is kept away from the rolling axis, it increases mass moment of inertia. It increases overall radius of gyration. And I've told you, if the radius of gyration increases, it increases the time period of the roll. So, the first thing is increase of mass moment of inertia or radius of gyration. And that will increase the time period of rolling. And if we are causing the obstruction, it means that it is coming in the way of smooth rolling of the ship. So you may say that to a certain extent, the amplitude of roll 
also will reduce. So it in a way reduces the amplitude. So this is the purpose of bilge keel, how it uh, helps in increasing the time period and reducing the amplitude of roll. Let's try and understand what an anti-rolling tank does. Okay, uh, let us say this is the profile of the ship, this is the water level and you might have a tank over here and a tank over here. The two tanks are connected by uh, a reasonably big bore pipe and there might be an equalizing pipe here. Now these two tanks are not full. What is the size of the tank and how much water it should have might be a function of the ship size, displacement etc. Now what are the various things which can happen because of the tank being there and the liquid being inside the tank. Number one, tank might be in a position higher than center of gravity. So in a way, it reduces the GM. You have a free surface in the tank and that free surface causes virtual loss of GM. Because of these two things, that is reduction of GM, there is a tendency that the roll period will increase. A few minutes back, I also told you if you place the weights away from the rolling axis, this will increase the mass moment of inertia and because of increase in mass moment of inertia, there will be increase of time period. That is the second purpose which it serves. But the most important is the third purpose which we must understand and you will appreciate that uh, it makes sense. As the ship rolls from upright to extreme starboard, the liquid will also go in the same direction. But important thing is, as the ship rolls back from extreme starboard to upright, the inclination is still on this side and liquid will still go on this side. And this is the point naval arcs have captured. The ship is rolling to one side and the liquid is going to opposite side. What happens if the tank extends right across the breadth of the vessel? Like a swimming pool. Suppose there is a swimming pool on deck, right? With the ship's roll, the water goes on the same side. If the ship rolls on one side, the entire water goes on that side. This will not help. Actually, this is dangerous. The synchronizing of the roll period of the ship and the water cycle of the tanks. The most striking feature of anti-rolling tanks is the rolling period of the ship and the cycle period of the water transfer is out of phase. Now, this is passive tank. You might have active tank whereby you might have an impeller which will run in both the direction. That means it can throw the water from one side to the other side. It can suck the water also depending on what is the message that is given by the sensor and sensor once again could be the gyrotype. The gyrotype sensor means it will sense the rolling which way the ship is rolling and accordingly it will give the command to the thruster which way the water has to be thrown. Now, <clears throat> Uh, by gyro, what I mean is the gyro is using the principle of precision. The centralized principle of gyro is if the torque is in one plane, the control precision is in a plane perpendicular to the applied torque plane. While the ship rolls one way, a particular command is given to the thruster and while the ship rolls the other way, a uh, different command goes to the thruster. This is how a gyro can be used as sensor. Now let's talk about the third type of anti-rolling device that is the active fin. Suppose this is a ship that you are viewing from the stern, this is the water level. And you might have the anti, you might have the active fin on both the sides displayed like this. If I look at the ship in the plan view, here you have rudder. Now let us compare the rudder with this active fin. Rudder has got a vertical axis and this fin has got a horizontal axis and the axis can be shown like this. Now upon turning of the rudder to port or starboard, we get a thrust in port or starboard direction, right? Suppose we turn the rudder this way, what happens is there is this thrust from this side which will push the stern part on this side and head will go that side. This is what we do in the maneuvering. If we look at the fin, you know, 
the fin might turn clockwise or anti-clockwise depending on what command is given by the sensor. So if you look at the ship from the side, here's the ship and you've got this fin, that fin might turn this way, okay, or the fin might turn this way, depending on what is the command. Let's take a situation that the ship is wanting to uh, roll to port side. Sensor gives the command that the ship is rolling to port side and that port side roll has to be prevented. That fin is made to turn in such a way that a downward thrust is created. Now ship is wanting to roll to port but a downward thrust can be created by turning the fin this way. So when the relative force of the water acts on the fin, there is a downward thrust that is created because the fin is in this posture. Now when the fin has turned this way, on the other side the fin must have turned this way. So by the other side fin turning this way, there will be an upward thrust. Now here we are creating the downward thrust so that the ship does not roll to port. On the other side there will be upward thrust so that the port rolling will be restricted or prevented. So this is how the active fins work. They uh, are capable of reducing a uh, roll amount of say in an experiment that was conducted. They found that the rolling was reduced from 20 degrees to something like 4 to 5 degrees. Extremely efficient. So what we have understood so far is there are uh, different kinds of anti-rolling devices and basic purpose of these anti-rolling devices is either to increase the time period or to control the amplitude of roll. So this way we can say that these active fins which are uh, acting on the directions of sensor are capable of cutting down the amplitude. Additionally, uh, they also increase the mass movement of inertia and hence the radius of gyration and to a certain extent they also increase the time period to make the role comfortable for the passengers.